Have you found the perfect domain name for yourself, but the hosting plan you want is on a completely different service to your domain name? It might feel like it's really difficult to point your existing domain to a brand new external hosting service, but in fact, it's actually really easy. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to connect your existing domain to a brand new external hosting service. So make sure you keep watching. Hi, I'm Yaz and this is Brainstorm Force. We create WordPress tutorials for beginners and non-coders. So if you want to improve your WordPress capabilities, then make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Trust me, you don't want to miss out. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to connect a domain I purchased on Google Domains and connect that to my new hosting service on SiteGround. SiteGround offers plans that are affordable with high quality hosting service. We'll be checking them out in a little bit. And if you want to jump to any particular section of the video, I've left timestamps in the progress bar below. And now if you're ready to get started, let's go ahead and navigate to SiteGround.com. But just letting you know that even though I'm demonstrating this using SiteGround, you can still follow the same exact steps with any other hosting provider as well. Just note that some of the menus and settings might be different between service to service. And this is what the SiteGround homepage looks like when you first arrive. You can see the various different types of hosting services they provide, including web hosting, WordPress hosting, WooCommerce hosting, as well as cloud hosting. If you already have an account on SiteGround, you can go ahead and log in using the top button over here. Alternatively, if you are registering with SiteGround and creating a new hosting plan for yourself for the first time, you can go ahead and choose one of these hosting services. If you're not sure which hosting type to choose for yourself, we actually have created a video where we discuss all the different types of hosting and hopefully help you determine which type of hosting would be best for you. If you're interested in checking this out, I'll leave a link in the description below, or you can click the top right corner on the annotation to access this video. Once you've figured out which hosting type to go with, you can go ahead and have a further look to see what kind of plans they offer. You can see that there's three different price points, Startup, Grow Big, and Go Geek, with increasing price points, so $6.99, $9.99, and $14.99, with increasing features with the more money you wanna spend. And you can go ahead and choose any one of these that best suits you. For now, just for this demonstration, I will choose the Startup plan. Just press Get Plan. Okay, coming into step two, it says Choose Domain, and you can see that SiteGround presents us with two different options. One of them is to register a brand new domain, which is where you can enter a domain name that you want or the domain name you're after into this text box here, and you can register it with SiteGround if it's available. But in our case, we already have a domain we'd like to use, an existing domain, so we choose I already have a domain. And I'd quickly just go and show you the domain that we have that we're gonna use, and this is what Google Domains looks like. It's really clean, it's very minimal, and I have a lot of reasons why I'd recommend you choose Google Domains over any other domain provider. And I've created a video outlining these reasons. And it's a little bit of a review of Google Domains as well. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave it in the description below, or you can click on the top right corner of your screen to access this video. And the domain that we're gonna be using for this tutorial is yasbsf.com, as you can see here. And that's the one we're gonna be connecting to our new SiteGround hosting. So coming back to SiteGround, we're gonna enter the domain name, yasbsf.com, and press proceed. And once it loads, this is the screen in step three, review and complete, where you can enter the email address, your password, that'll be associated with your SiteGround account, as well as your personal information, including country, your name, your address, and then your credit card information so you can complete your purchase. And down here is where you choose the period of your hosting plan. Right now it's set to 12 months, but you can choose between 1, 12, 24, and 36. And the pricing changes on which period you wanna choose. Once that's all done, you can go ahead and press pay now to complete your sign up and complete your purchase of your new hosting plan. And this is the first step you have to take if you don't have an existing membership with SiteGround, but we actually have a login already. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in. And this is what it looks like when you first log into your SiteGround account. And if you don't have any websites set up at the moment, you'll have a little orange button at the top here that says set up site, which you can press to go and set up your first website. Alternatively, if you already have websites, we're gonna go up here to the websites button here. And once this screen loads, it will show you all the websites that you currently have that's associated with your SiteGround account. And to create a new website, you're gonna click this big orange new website button on the top right corner. And in step one of adding a new website, you can see that you're adding a new website to the hosting plan. And step one, it shows you three different options. You can either have a brand new domain, an existing domain, or a temporary domain. This is kind of like the two options we had when we were trying to sign up for SiteGround earlier. 
So again, we're going to choose existing domain because we have a domain that we already own. Press select. And this is where we enter the domain name. So once again, I'm going to enter yasbsf.com. Press enter. And right now it just went and checked to see if that domain name is registered with SiteGround. And then it gives us this warning here. The domain you wish to use is not registered in your SiteGround account. This means that this domain is not registered with SiteGround. Of course, it's not. It's actually with Google Domains, as we've seen before. So it's just a little warning to make sure that you should have access to your domain if you're proceeding with this and trying to connect a hosting to it. And we do have access, so we can proceed and press continue. Arriving on to step two of adding a new website, you can see it says set up site. This is where you set up your website with an application like WordPress. So you've got that option here, start a new website and install a new application. This includes WordPress. And over here on the right hand side, you've got migrate website, where you can transfer an existing website from a different hosting to your new hosting on SiteGround. And alternatively, you can skip both of these steps and create an empty site. Right now, we're going to go ahead and press select on start new website. And then you can see that they've provided us with a few different application options to install on your website. We've got, of course, WordPress, WordPress and WooCommerce, and Weebly Site Builder as well. If you're familiar with our channel, you would already know that we highly recommend that you use WordPress for your website builder of choice. It's very easy to install and it's incredibly customizable, allowing you to build any kind of website you want. Why wouldn't you choose WordPress, right? So I'm going to go ahead and press select on WordPress. And now you can see that it's asking us to set up our login credentials for the WordPress dashboard. So you can proceed to enter whatever email you want to associate with your WordPress login. So I'm just once again going to enter as bsf at gmail.com. And I'm going to set up a password as well. Oh no, don't you just hate it when your preferred password is considered too weak for most of these websites? So I'm going to have to come up with something a little bit longer and hope that it meets the requirements. Okay, that's good. Just make sure you write this down because I'm notorious for forgetting these really long passwords with upper and lower case and numbers. So I hope you guys can remember it better than I can. So once that's all done, you can press continue. All right, we've got one more step, which is the add extras. This is just a little bit of upselling through SiteGround where they're trying to upsell the SG SiteGround site scanner. So what this does is that it checks your website daily and notifies you if there's any sort of hacking or malicious attacks on your website. We're just going to ignore that for now. We're just going to proceed and press finish. And right now it's creating our website. It's going to take a few minutes. So just going to wait any minute now. One eternity later. All right, here we are. And to be honest, it didn't take any more than two minutes max. So don't worry. And right now our website with the domain name yasbsf.com has been created. So that's perfect. And this is the actual step where you're going to be pointing your domain to your new hosting service. And as you can see here, you've got a little menu here, point your domain. And we're going to be using the information here to point our domain back to the SiteGround hosting. So right now we're going to go back to where our domain is registered. For me, that's going to be Google Domains. I'm going to go back here and I'm already within the settings for my domain name, yasbsf.com. And you can see on the left hand side, you've got a lot of settings. Google Domains makes it really easy to manage your domains. And on the left hand side, the one we're after is DNS. So once I click DNS, it should load up all my DNS settings. And what we're going to be doing is changing the name servers here to match the ones here. In basic terms, the name servers translate domain names to IP addresses. So when you type in your domain name into your web browser, it knows exactly which web server to go to to find where your website is hosted. Right, so you can see here that they provide us with two different name servers. And what we're going to do is come back into Google Domains and you can see they've got a few different options in terms of name servers. We're going to choose the use custom name servers. And right now it's currently blank. But what we're going to do is go back to SiteGround and copy that first line of name servers, NS1. Come back to Google Domains. And we're going to paste this in that line. And remember that there's two different name servers. So we're going to add another line as well. And we're going to copy the second name server to Google Domains as well paste. And as you can see, we've pasted both of them together. It looks perfect. And make sure you hit save. Otherwise, none of the changes will take place. Press save. Should load. And awesome. Changes to yasbsf.com has been saved. They'll take effect within 48 hours. 
So you can see that it does take a bit of time for your domain to connect to its new hosting plan, but that's all right because if everything goes well, when you type in your domain name into your web browser, it should show you your new WordPress website that's hosted on SiteGround. And just to show you what it looks like if everything's gone well, when you type in your domain name into your web browser and go, it should show you your brand new WordPress website. And once that's all done, congratulations, you've successfully connected your domain to a brand new external hosting. That wasn't as bad as you thought, right? It was actually quite easy. And now you can go ahead and manage your website and SiteGround offers you one of the coolest interfaces to manage your website with. It's a nice alternative to cPanel that's quite modern and minimal and everything's just laid out really nicely. If you chose to go with an empty site in the previous step, you can always come here and install whatever application you want, including once again, WordPress. But again, why would you install anything other than WordPress? And you can do so really easily. You just set up the same information. You can enter your username, just like we did before, your email, your password. It's all really easy. And all the other settings and features that you'd want to access for your website are all available on this left-hand menu here, making it really easy to manage your website. And now that we've successfully connected our existing domain to our new hosting service on SiteGround, that concludes our video. If you ran into any trouble on the way here, make sure you let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to help you resolve any issues. And if you got value out of this video, make sure you help us out by leaving a like, subscribe down below, and turn on notifications so you don't miss out on any of our future WordPress tutorials. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'm Yaz, this is Brainstorm Force, and I'll see you in the next one.